Hi, this is Will Tonner for Lampay Audio. Uh, today we're going to look at how we achieve um, a bullet time effect in Unity uh, and how we go about creating the sounds and get that integrated into the Unity project itself using Wise. So let's jump right in. So first things first, let's go ahead and uh, look at an example of this in the game engine itself. So here we've got a character, got footstep sounds as well. Got a car coming in from the right. Now we enter bullet time. You can hear all of the sounds are slowed down, so the footsteps, the car engine, the jump sounds, and as we come out of it, you can hear it all fade back to normal again. But just once again. And back out. So let's have a look at what's going on in the background here. Uh, so if we have a look around Wise, um, first thing uh, worth noting that we've set up is we've got an auxiliary bus um, called BT Reverb. So that's the reverb I mentioned that we're going to be routing everything through. Um, it's normalized at zero. Um, and it's a sort of stylistic reverb that you would have heard um, during the jumps and during the footsteps. Gives you that sort of echoey, uh, echoey sound. Um, in terms of the uh, parameter control, I mentioned we've essentially just got the one. And that's this one here for time scale. Um, it's a range between zero and one. And it mirrors the time dot time scale range with a unity, um, which we'll have a look at in a, in a second. Um, so the value defined by time scale within Unity it heavily impacts the, the the playback speed and the filtering and the gain of each of the sounds in the bullet time work unit. So in essence, one is full speed and 0.5 represents half speed. Um, the value in between creates a sliding scale, and that's how we allow Wise to mimic how the effect is represented visually as we slide in and we slide out. So it, otherwise, we'd have a simple toggle that wouldn't be wouldn't be as effective. Um, so before we look at the new sound effect items I mentioned, let's just have a look at where we've mapped this parameter control to other sounds around the project. Um, so if I jump back into the audio tab uh, and we go into the uh, character mixer, um, then essentially you can see the, the, the BT revs, reverbs match there. Um, in practice, it just means, like I say, all the footsteps and the jump sounds will have that stylistic echo, as well as having this drastically slowed down playback as well. Um, same applies to some of the other things we've got. Like we've got a car and we've got a jet in the in the um, in the application as well, and then they're affected. Um, if we go into ambient demo and the ambient mixer, again you've got the reverb there as well. Um, other things like the like uh, the lights from uh, the previous videos are in there as well. So pretty much anything in the game world is affected by that time scale. So that's what we're affecting that already exists in the project. In terms of new sounds we're introducing, if we go to bullet time demo. Um, you can see there's quite a few different sounds, so let's go through all of these. Um, the uh, the stop drop is essentially just a, a basic sort of low frequency kicker. Uh, it does not; it's got a, a actual um, reverb baked into the file, so we're overriding the default BT reverb. We've got a little bit in there, but there's actually some reverb baked into the uh, into that sound itself. Um, and then we've got start drop, um, which is a container. So there's a couple of different sounds that we have that play for start drop. Uh, that's one. That's another. And that's the third one. Uh, and the idea is that uh, they they signify the fact that we're coming out of the effect. Um, it's a random container, so we, we don't ever hear the same um, two sound effects twice in a row. Um, and it's quite easy to just add additional ones in this container if we wanted to. Um, so time stop, that is our uh, uh, tape effect, um, and it's heavily modulated using that timescale RTPC. Um, so again, if we, if we listen to that, and what we'll do is we'll mimic the timescale dropping from 1 to 0.5 as it does in the game when we do this. So at 1 you can't hear it, and as we go down, we hear that and then it disappears out. But you hear the effect of that. Um, in terms of things like high pass frequencies and there's a, obviously a, a stylistic sort of um, sweeping of the pitch going down as well. Um, it's pretty heavily emphasized. It creates that overall impression of, of time slowing down. Um, so the curve and the control points um, that I've, I've used on this one, if we go into the, uh, the RTPC, I've set these to, you know, what works for me and for my game. And again, if we, if we hit play... example that's a low pass filter that we're looking at there that's affected nicely and i've customized that curve of how i want but this, this is where Y shines here it's, it's, it's such a user-friendly um gui and it makes it very easy to just you know tweak that and change the curve and move the points around if we need to at all but that's how it looks like that gives you an idea 
And then on the other side, we've got Time Start, um, which is very similar. Uh, basically, it's the uh, the reverse version of the Time Stop effect. So if we go play, and I move this up. Uh, again, RTPC curves again, a little bit different. I've tweaked them again to work perfectly for, for what I'm trying to achieve here with Time Start. That's the pitch climbing up on that one. Um, but that gives you an idea of, of how we're sort of coming in and out of the effect. When we're actually in the middle of the effect, that's where Time Drone uh, uh, kicks in. So what we'd want to do for Time Drone essentially um, is have that play just generally in the background. So let me start off by dropping the time scale to 0.5, which is where we expect it to be in the game at the moment. Hit play. And it's just a sort of core ambience, almost like a bit of a wall of sound to remind the player that they're, they're within this effect. And based on what the time scale is, so if, say the, the game programmer goes ahead and makes it actually, rather than being half speed, I want it to be about a third of the speed. Then we've got a bit of programming built in to actually allow that speed to come down even more and emphasize it even more. And then the other, other element is these time effects, which are basically little ornamental sounds that play uh, as, a, as a random playlist over and over again. Um, so I'll get that back up to 0.5. Let's hit play. And I'll get them to play in the background as we talk over these. But essentially, it's a load of randomly uh, generated effects that play at various times. Um, there's a sort of randomized duration uh, involved in it. Uh, and they, they loop round and round. Um, but they again, they just sit on top of the time drone itself and, and give us a bit of a reminder again that we're in the, uh, we're in the bullet time effect. So the only other thing to look at is the actual events that control it. It's very, very simple. Um, we basically have one that enters bullet time and that starts all of the relevant, um, uh, relevant audio items that we need to. Um, and then we have one uh, to exit a bullet time. So all the programming needs to queue is enter and exit on the game object within Unity. Um, and they just need to make sure that they're, they're setting the time scale um, uh, parameter control as they're, uh, 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 as they're incorporating their code together. So hopefully that makes sense. We're going to jump over into Unity now and we'll have a look at how that, uh, that's integrated into the game itself. So the bullet time effect um, is represented in Unity by a very simple game object with two components. So there's a bullet time game object. And then in terms of components, we've just got an AK bank um, component to, to load the actual um, sound back itself. And then we've got a custom script called bullet time transition. And that enables and disables the effect and that, that holds pretty much all the information um, about how, uh, how, how the system works, both as a game mechanic and also in terms of posting the audio back to Wise. Um, so I'm actually ad adapting a script um, by Derek Stobb um, that gives us all the core slow motion functionality and variables. Um, so I'll post a link up to, to the original um, script itself and the tutorial about how to, how to create this effect. Um, uh, but as with the day night controller from, uh, from the ambience video, um, I'm, I'm making the script relevant to Wise by making direct reference to the API. So that's the changes that I've, I've made. Um, so if we jump over into the actual script itself, so the main things we need to make sure we're getting to reference within the script is the event triggers to enter and exit the effect, and then the frame by frame updating of um, time dot time scale within Unity, which pushes back to our um, RTPC in Wise that's just called time scale. Um, so the original script contains um, two main variables really. One is the minimum time scale which is what we want it to drop down to when it's fully enabled. So in this case, half speed. So remember, we built the wise effect with 0.5 as the agreed minimum value in our side. But again, we could change it here um, to 0.3 or 0.2 or whatever, and that would reflect in wise. That'd be absolutely fine. And then the speed that the actual transition um, occurs over in seconds. So again, one-to-one -one mapping means the transition speed will affect the sounds playback as well as the actual time dilation uh, in the game. Um, and then we've got a basic uh, variable that we call um, which is, is bullet time, which lets, basically lets the game engine know whether we are or we're not in bullet time. So that's what we initialize. If we jump down to where the update portion of the script is, um, what we're doing here is uh, calling a, a set RTPC command for the timescale RTPC. And, and again, every frame, we're basically telling the timescale RTPC and wise, what does time dot timescale within Unity um, uh, read back as at, at this very moment? Um, and then within the if statement that's used to toggle the effect, we've created another nested if else statement. So that's basically what we're saying here. So you can see those post events enter and exit. 
and it's all about whether we're in or out of bullet time. That's how we decide which one of those events we want to post, um, which means we can go in and out and in and out as fast as we want. Um, and the, the game will keep track of whether we're in the state or not. And therefore, wise will also keep up um, with those uh, with those um, player actions, too. Um, that's actually it for the script um, in terms of uh, what we're doing from a wise point of view. This IE enumerate and everything down here, this actually affects um, the uh, the physical uh, effect within the game. It can be left as is based on um, Derek's script originally. Like I say, check out that video if you want to know in depth what this um, what this portion of the script is doing. Last thing to note is we jump back into the game and I'll just hit play on this. Um, you might have noticed uh, in the initial part of the video that on top of the core sound effects, um, there's actually a couple of interesting sort of visual filters that highlight the shift. So if I go in it now, you'll notice that the sort of camera fades in, there's like a bloom effect. Um, and basically all we're doing here is just activating a couple of script components um, that, that are on top of the camera game object. It's completely optional and I won't go into detail on this, mainly it's, it's an audio tutorial. Um, but they all reference the core bullet time transition script, most notably the is bullet time variable, which is a public variable, so it can be referenced by other visual scripts. So I'll come back out of this now. So there's a ton of different tutorials about these sort of visual effects, and they just they work nicely with the with the audio sound, um, but uh, they're they're a whole category themselves. So I'll, I'll leave those out for today. Uh, that's basically it. Um, I hope that was helpful. Um, as always, um, any comments or any feedback you guys have got, please let me know in the comments below. Um, and uh, I hope to see you on the next video.